Hi, I'm Jose Tejeron, and this is the second part of the tutorial in which we are creating a cartoon character in the style of one of the first animated movies, Blanca Nieves, from the Disney Studio, thanks to character creator and iClone. Check out the video above if you haven't already. We've stuck to giving physicality to the clothes of the personage. It's a really simple and quick thing to do. We have to create a diffuse texture of the object we want to have physics, using black for the area we don't want to have physics, and white for the opposite. If in the Modify menu, we go to the Physics section, and selecting the appropriate model, we click on Activate Physics. It will then ask us for the weight map that we had created before as a diffuse texture. If we activate the Soft Cloth Simulation button at the top of the program and going to the timeline at the bottom, we can apply an animation to the character to check if the result is the desired one. You can adjust the properties of the fabric or hair you are simulating to your liking. It is also possible, if you see that the clothing or hair is going through the model, to adjust the collision of the physics with the character. To do this, we have to go to the Attributes menu of the character and find the Collision Shape button. When the floating window pops up, we can select the collision capsule of the member we want and increase its size. Once modified, we can check that the result is as desired by applying the application to the character again. These animations help us enormously when it comes to finding errors and checking the quality of our character. One of the most important checks is that of the facial expressions. In this new version of Character Creator 4, we have, as a great novelty, the ability to correct and customize the expressions to achieve a character that feels really alive. Let me use for this part another one of the characters that will appear in the video game I am creating, the Evil Furry. His animation style is much more cartoonish and his expressions should be too. However, we see that the predefined morphs do not meet our requirements and in fact fail to be applied to the character. If we go to the Modify menu and enter the Motion Pose section, we can find the Facial Profile Editor button. A new window will appear on the left side of the screen with the same name as the button. To begin with, we will enter this window and click on the Edit Expressions button. We can see a long list of specific facial movements that are unlocked by clicking on the button. They all form the standard CC4 facial profile, but I recommend unlocking the extended version even if they are cartoon characters. To unlock lock it, just click on the traditional button below, and in the pop-up window, click on the extended option. Now we can edit the facial expressions. It's quite fun, but let's start with the most obvious mistake first, closing the eyes. Although it's the most serious error, it's the easiest to fix, as Character Creator offers a function just to solve this problem. Just go to the top menu bar, Character, and click on the option Correct Eye Blink. We can see how the problem is solved immediately, and it also corrects the morphs that take care of closing the eyes. We can notice, however, that the blend shape does not cover everything when its value is at 50%, and creates a strange effect. To fix this, we don't have to go very far, we just need to edit the Maya. At the bottom of this menu, we can see a series of buttons in the Expression Tool section. If we click on the first button called Edit Mesh. Now let's simply fatten the eyelid a bit to avoid the problem. When we finish, we click on the Edit Mesh button on the right to exit this editing mode, and next to the blend shape that we have activated at 100%, we click on the little lightning bolt symbol. With this, we register all the deformations we make on the model of our character. Remember that while we are editing the blend shapes, we can't edit the base of the character. And that's it. Now that we see that the blend shape works well, whatever its percentage of appearance, we can reflect this deformation to the opposite side of the face. To do this, you have to look for the little symbol of two arrows pointing at each other. You can correct or create all the blend shapes by editing the Maya in Character Creator in this way. But I recommend using the option that is right next to the button we have seen. If we click on Go Z Expression, when we have activated the blend shape we want to create, which in this case is the open mouth, it will take our character to ZBrush to edit the expression. Editing the expressions with a cartoon character may be the most important thing after creating the character itself. You can't be satisfied with just correcting the mistakes in the expressions, you have to go further. The best advice I can give you is to look for concept art references from your films and series of reference. I should look at the concept art of the first Disney movies, but I want the character to be more expressive and current. A good example is the art of the famous Jim Kim, one of the artists who has marked the artistic style of the 3D animation 
super productions of the Disney studio. You can see perfectly how each character, although they have the same feelings in the sketches, they express them in a totally different way. Jim Kim is not satisfied with giving the same smile to all the characters. If you look at the smiling expressions, they are very different depending on the anatomy of the character, their way of being, and their background. However, what you see here is the final concept art, the one used as a reference by animators and 3D modelers. Before arriving at these drawings, there are hundreds of sketches in search of the most appropriate expressions for each character. And it is not only different in each character. In the first sketches of Elsa, when the character was going to be the villain of the film, her smile is not the same as the sketches in which she is the good heroine. The smile she has as a child is not the same as the smile she has as an adult. To design characters and and bring them to life, however cartoonish and deformed they may be, you need to have some knowledge of anatomy. I recommend looking at the work of Anatomy for Sculptors to learn the anatomy behind facial expressions. Understanding when and why facial wrinkles form will allow you to create characters that feel real. If your character is not human, you can look to other great Disney studio artists such as Bora Montoro and Corey Loftus. They have an absolute mastery of human anatomy, but they also have an amazing mastery of animal anatomy and demonstrate it by humanizing their faces in a very appealing way. To end the topic of expressions, I would like to remind you that Character Creator allows you to add an infinite number of new expressions, and the more you add, the more versatile your character will be. Before returning to the character we were making, I'll take the opportunity to explain how to add a spring effect, an automatic effect that allows us to create an overlapping animation. It consists of a complementary and overlapping action that is part of the 12 principles of animation identified by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston in their book, The Illusion of Life, Disney Animation. It is considered one of the best animation books of all time. First, we must put the model to which we are going to apply the animation in a 3D program that allows us to create a rig. Once we have placed the bones in the model and we have applied and corrected the bind skin. Putting the bones is a bit complicated. Keep in mind that they work in hierarchies. It is best not to put more than four or five in the direction of the X, Z, and Y axes of each joint. All this will determine the final movement. Finally, we can export it to Character Creator as an FBX file. To add it to the character, we have to go to the Create menu and look for the Prop option. By clicking on it, we will be able to find and add the FBX file. Now that the model is placed, we will look for the Edit Spring button in the Modify menu. We can see that on the left side, a window with all the bones that we have placed in our model will be displayed. If we select one of the bones we can apply, in the menu on the right side of the screen, the effect we want, Translate or Rotate. In my case, I'm going to apply the rotate effect only to some of the bones. And below, to the group settings, I'm going to apply very little mass and bounciness, but the maximum of strength. You can add a test animation to the model and try this, or any other setting to make sure the effect is what you're looking for. Now let's send our character to iClone. I'm not going to dwell too much on the animation of the character, you know iClone. You can see an example of its potential in the last interview of this channel, Crafting Realistic 3D Infant, where it is shown how a character has been created and animated using Reillusion software. iClone is specially focused on working with motion capture animation, and the animation of my character is mainly done with this method. This method is a movement recording technique using sensors placed on the actor's body. You can get all the movements you want in the actor score shop, but I want to show you a method to animate cartoon characters in a very fast way. Here you can see in this example where you can see some of the steps of the animation of a scene from the Disney movie. Roughly speaking, the first step that professional animators, not counting the layout, do when animating characters is the blocking technique or step animation. We can use the same method using the Edit Motion Layer tool with the character, but instead of going on to the spline phase, we will generate a complete animation using only these key poses. This method of animation is used because it is so fast and economical. Here you can see an example of a similar animation. 
Thanks to the new iClone tools, we can do it in just a couple of steps. If we select the keyframes and click the right button of the mouse, a menu will appear. Inside it, we click the option Transition Curve. As you will see, a window will appear with 16 types of curves that we can apply from one key pose to another with a single click. It's a good solution for works with a lot of cartoon animations like video games. As you can see, I've also added a digital soul animation layer just for the face on top, and the result is quite satisfactory. However, when comparing it with the motion capture version, you can notice that the movement is a bit artificial, and the more realistic the character is, the worse the result can be. Finally, I have finished the animation of my character in iClone, but before taking it to Unreal, I noticed that the right hand, which has a reach target with the broom, vibrates from time to time. Here you can see it in slow motion. This happens when the same model has several reach target or pick parent associated to it. The problem is solved if we go to the animation menu and with the selected model, which in this case is the broom, we click on the option flatten all motion with constraint. Perfect, let's go to Unreal Engine 5 to prepare the project. When we have a project open in Unreal, we must make sure that in the settings menu, in the plugins section, we have iClone Live Link activated. To work, we need to activate the Live Link menu in the window menu under Virtual Production. In the same way that in the Cinematics menu, we should activate the Take Recorder menu. Finally, we will go to the Live Link menu we just opened and click on Plus Source where we can find the iClone option and add the port number that will connect Unreal to iClone. Of course, in iClone, we will have to do the same and go to the Plugins menu and activate Unreal Live Link. In the menu that will open, we will only have to click Transfer File and wait for the whole scene to be exported to Unreal. Now that everything is imported, we can, inside iClone, leave the Transfer section and go to the Link Inside Unreal Live Link. When we click on the Link Activated button, we can see that the animation is played in Unreal, but without the physicality of the clothes. To get the physics simulation also in Unreal, we have to go to the Edit menu and check that the Project Settings menu is activated. If we go to this menu in the Global Physics Settings section, we will find the option Bake Animation. With this activated and the skirt selected, we just have to play the animation so that it registers. When it finishes, we can deactivate the physics and the bake animation option. Finally, we have to go to Unreal and activate the option Simulate. At this point, I recommend adjusting the collisions with the profile to avoid strange effects, but you can see a whole tutorial about it in this YouTube channel. Now that everything is ready, let's go to the Take Recorder menu and drag it into all the elements whose movement we want to record. If we click on the red circle, it will start a countdown. When it finishes, we must click on the play button in the iClone window for the animation to play and be recorded in the Unreal timeline. It's as simple as that. The Reillusion team provided me with the beta version of the Unreal data link and it is really useful for this process. Before we start, there are two ways to achieve the 2D cartoon effect. The first is by using effects on the material of an object, making the line go in inside the model. For example, you can download the free stylized materials pack from Unreal to see how they work. The second way would be to use a post-processing effect that encompasses everything that appears on the screen and creates lines on the outside and inside of the models. We are going to use the latter cell shading effect. There is a great course on the dev.epicgames platform called Unreal Engine The Power of the Post Processor that teaches strategies for animators and non-technical artists artists to achieve stylized renders with post-processing materials. But here I will show you the cartoon effects I created for my video game, the evil furry. The first thing we will do in our Unreal project is to go to the quickly add to the project menu and add a post-process volume from the visual effects sub-menu by dragging it into the 3D world. With this element, we can correct or achieve practically any visual result you can imagine inside Unreal in a really easy way. Remember that by default, this post-process cube will only affect the visual section of the scene if the camera is inside it. To extend the effect to the whole scene, we only have to go to the details of this element and look for the post-process volume settings section where we will find the option infinite extent. 
The tune shading effect is composed of two materials, the one that is in charge of creating the contour lines, and the one that is in charge of the light only has two tones, or one, as in this case. Let's start with the latter. We are going to create a material called PPMM Base Color, and we are going to enter it to edit it. In the Materials section, we are going to select the Post Process option so that it fulfills the function we want. We can see that now it will only give us the option to work with the emissive color, and from it we are going to remove the node Scene Texture Scene Color. To remove the error message, we have to indicate to the node that we want it to use the filtered base color. Finally, let's go back to the material and select within the submenu Post Process Material in the section Blendable Location the option Before Tone Mapping. If we now save the material and go back to the Post Process cube, we can go to its Post Process Material section and add this new material. We will immediately see that the scene loses the light and we only see the textures. Perfect. Now let's go for the second material. We are going to create the Outlines material. There is no point in repeating the great tutorial you have on dev.epicgames, which also explains how to fix common problems such as outlines that have bugs. To skip this step, we will go to the tutorial and download the project and its materials. Let's open the demo project and open the content drawer to look for the post process folder to find the PPMM outlines all material. If we click on it, we will see that there is a group called polylines and another one called normal lines. In this comparison, you can see why in my material I have removed the normal lines. The result is cleaner and more controlled. If you want to make the same material for the outlines, remove this group. Now we are going to take all these nodes to our project. If in our project we add the material we have created and go inside it, we can paste the nodes we have copied from the example project. To apply this material we go back to the post process volume menu we created and add one more array in post process materials. We have to indicate that it's an asset reference and to make it work we have to put the outline material above the base color material. Ready. However, the result could be better. The first thing we noticed is that you can hardly see the lines. If we reopen the outline material and click on the first node on the left called Polygon Outline Thickness, we will see that in its details menu, the default value is 1. Let's try to give it a value of 4 and within the group Polygons Outline Quality in the node Polygon Outline Amount, let's change the value from 0.2 to 3. Now the effect certainly looks better. It really looks like a drawing, but now we can also see better the lines that are formed in areas where they shouldn't be. This is a little bit spoiling the final result, but I have devised a solution for this problem. If we go back once more to the outline material and in the blends, poly, and normal group, we can duplicate the scene texture and mask nodes together with the lerp node. Now we duplicate the first two nodes again and connect the old lerp node to the new one at the letter B. From the same, we can connect the duplicated nodes to the new lerp one to the letter A to finally connect this new lerp to the material. We only have to connect the alpha channel, but first we are going to go to the scene texture node that we still have to connect and change its configuration so that instead of using the post process input as a texture, it uses the metallic channel in the scene. In this way, we have achieved that the metallic textures become masks where the black areas allow the formation of lines and the white or zero color prevents the formation of lines. Now we are going to eliminate the mask node which is connected to the color channel and we are going to replace it with the 1x node which in turn we are going to connect to the seal node which in turn we will connect to a clamp node which we will obtain by copying it from the same blends poly group. All this we connect to the alpha channel of the lerp and we have the material with the mask ready. To see the result we are going to create a metallic texture for the face material. We have chosen metallic textures because as we have a post effect that only shows the diffuse channel of the whole scene, there is no material that needs metallic textures. 
The face mask will depend very much on your design, and you will need some testing to make sure that the effect is what you want. The only thing left to do is to connect the metal texture to the material and apply the material to the face model. As you can see, the result now is much better and much more similar to the original sketch. Finally, we can enjoy our cartoon character fully animated as if it were an authentic old school 2D movie. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. It took a lot of work and I hope it will be useful for your projects. Remember that you can add my funny video game to your wish list, and if you want more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to Reillusion's official channel.